It's finally legal! Today on Local Chronicles, the new forbidden and limited list, first tournament ever and it was so much fun playing Grass Branded. Once Grass was released, I was like, okay, it is time. The poll on Twitter, of course, won. Grass Branded won and, you know, if you're not following me on Twitter, this is where you get to vote which decks you see in this episode. Sleeved it up, took it to Locals and honestly, it was a blast. And again, Local Chronicles is the best way to learn how to play this deck because honestly, other YouTubers who upload a three hour silent video of them playing in Locals, that's not the play. And of course, if you follow me on Twitter and subscribe here, you can see next week's poll where you get to vote on what I play next. So you should do it. And just a quick reminder that on the 22nd, my first bundle, my first collection and merch with SleeveChief.te is going to be released. New branded merch, I'm still not gonna say what it is, but I promise you, you want to see it. And yeah, keep the comments nice, it's just the locals, and let's go into round one versus Tenpai. Round one begins versus Tenpai. They win the die roll, let me go first, and as you can see from their hand, they have a lot of interaction. I go for fusion deployment, summoning the Cartesia, and uh, then I activate the effect, because my hand is not that good. Effect Veiler gets hit with the Veiler. I look at the hand, pull away a Magnemut that could have been activated, and I pass with Droplet in hand, which actually was a huge misplay. I should have said it, because I knew they had Evenly. I didn't want them to, you know, take away a card of mine, but at the end of the day, since I knew it was Tenpai, it was actually smarter to just set it. But it didn't really matter, because I was able to trigger off my um, Fallen Valbaz to summon back um, he actually chained the Synchro to make a Black Rose, which was okay to pop my entire field. And this is where some Tenpai experience might come into play, because even though he had game on board, he missed it because he thought the Fadra was once per turn. So I'm at like 300 life points. Um, and uh, yeah, next turn comes up and uh, basically everything goes boom. Cartesia comes back. I normal summon the Cartesia once again, activate the effect once again, and they get hit with Valor once again. He still has two sets, and I fuse away with the Cartesia now to make Grand Gnoll. My set is, of course, the Forbidden Droplet, and I manage to finally get a copy of Branded Fusion, which I activate. So I summon the Albion here. Albion um, will uh, get me from the graveyard um, the Mirror Jade to summon, and Cartesia chained to summon a Drago Stapelia, Bestial Serenir to make sure I have game, and then um, he could have summoned back the uh, Biden, but uh, he eventually did it. So game two, he decides to go first with Dora Dora Chandra to make a seals. And um, he's got a set and two Ash Blossoms in hand. Start off with Albion, normal summon the Aluber here. I have called by in hand, which I just decide to hold for the seals. Um, I do draw two because I'm not afraid of the hand. He did go first, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, I do special summon the Cartesia here, and uh, I just go battle phase. Uh, I try to activate the effect before I go into the battle phase, I get hit with the dimensional barrier calling fusion, and um, yeah, I go ahead and attack. He activates seals on declaration, and then I chain call by, which is, uh, this is why I was holding it. And uh, yeah, I set one, which is my own dimensional barrier that I drew. He summons Dora Dora, Chandra, and then I just fire off the uh, dimensional barrier right after um, fusion summoning before they get the Chandra on the board, so you would get the tag out effect. So chain one Grand Gnoll, chain two Grand Gnoll, um, and uh, I believe he ashes the second effect summoned from deck, yeah, which is valid. Uh, he puts the Chandra on the board, I activate the dimensional barrier, and then uh, I also get uh, Serenir into play just to have a body to run over. And uh, yeah, end phase, Cartesia comes back to hand, and then I just go through the motions here. Cartesia Special Summon, Aluber Normal Summon, search for Branded in Red. I go for a Guardian Chimera to make sure I can bait out this Kaiman. Um, at least that's what I thought it was. Branded Fusion, Albion, Mirror Jade. I obviously have enough for game here. And uh, I attack, attack. On my third attack declaration, he activates the Bident. Illegal play, summons back. It's only when it's Fusion Summon, but it doesn't matter. I just have too much going on. We go on 1-0 in the tournament versus Tenpai. So uh, yeah. We go ahead to game round number two versus Sprite Fairies. We get Veilard on our Spring Ends kid. We have a very poor hand. We have a droplet set and we have 
um, branded opening, I believe, as well, or high spirit. So we go for the Magnemet so we can search a Druid. Oh, no, I actually have a fusion duplication there. This is why I make this big play. Droplet costs Serenir on the Diviner. It doesn't matter that it doesn't really resolve. He takes my Magnemet, but now I can use the Magnemot, the Serenir in my graveyard to send the Brand Infusion, and now my trap is live. And thankfully, he did not send Ents with Diviner. He sent Herald of the Arclight. So on resolution, I can fire off the Fusion Duplication, copy the Branded Fusion, go into Lubelion, discarding Cartesia by sending um, Albez and Gimmick Puppet, and then shuffling back to summon Sanctifier. Sanctifier goes and summons Gimmick Puppet Nightmare and Diviner, and my actually his Diviner sends a tragedy to my graveyard, which searches Alubur for follow-up. Big brains here. He for some reason crashes with the Magnemot, um, but yeah, it's just too much with the Puppet Lock. We're on to game two, and again, his deck is kind of weird. He makes me go first, which was a good play on his end because I sat it out so much. And he has Valor, he has Diddy Crow for the Branded Fusion in Graveyard that I tried to add. And of course he has a Magnemot as well. And basically all I have is the Aluber. And uh, with Sprite, Gamma Burst, I just get shot to the moon. So much damage. He goes Onibimaru to banish my uh, Despian Aluber here. And uh, it just swings for game. So, game number three. He thinks I was uh, going first, but uh, he, th he thought I was going to let him go first, but I went first. And Grass. This is the first Grass of many you will see. I swear to God, all of my opponents cut my deck and shuffled it really well. It just happens. Um, it's it's a really slim chance, though. I am aware of that. Allure of Darkness, Banish the Serenir, Normal Summon. I assume that he's on some board breakers and some hand traps, but I have full Puppet Lock combo here. He actually has Magnemot and Called by the Grave which should beat this. Now, check this out. This is where the Astellar comes into play because I did not have access to any of my tuners, but Astellar, with a couple of spells in hand, makes sure you get there, and this is how you actually get to the puppet. Spring Hands Kit, effect, and of course, Chain Retribution in the graveyard to bring back Brand Fusion Hand, set a banishment, and it's just a big, big ass board. So draw phase, I know that I'm not losing this in a thousand years. Draw phase, uh, if he chains called by, it does prevent the puppet lock, but he chained Magnemoth, which was met with the retribution that I brought back with Kit. And it's fine. Over puppet lock number two <laughs> for game. And we go on to round three. I lose the die roll versus unchained magical musketeer Finsmith. Pretty solid deck, to be honest. Like, really, really, really solid. Um, good end board, Desiree. Unchained interruptions. Like, you know, the old school unchained traps. And, of course, DDD, which is... Solid against Branded, even though it negates activation, it's double negate. And basically everything in Branded special summons, so you know it's relatively hard. He goes for a Desiree, DDD, Arua, and the Pop Trap, I believe, is set. Lure of Darkness, Banish the Mercurier here. And uh, yeah, Book of Eclipse is a great board breaker, always has been against Unchained. And um, Chain Droplet here. So everything is face down. I go for Foolish Burial, go for the Albion in the graveyard so my Cartesia can special summon itself. Branded Fusion goes to hand here, and um, it gets ashed. Yeah, he has Valor for the Cartesia as well. It's not looking great, folks. I do summon it. This is a misplay that he pointed out, which was correct. Even though I could only kill one of his monsters, I could have at least attacked maybe the Desiree, so he doesn't get an extra draw from it during the end phase. So remember that. But it doesn't really matter because on the crackback, uh, you know, during the end phase, he popped my Cartesia with the Unchained Trap and it was over. We do lose game one. We go on to game two and look who's here again. The grass looks greener. Yes, yes, baby. Mill 20 right off the top. I believe it was like actually 18, not 20. I think he was playing a bit of a higher count. And uh, yeah, Sheeran makes the Quiridus. And then uh, I just have an extra fusion on board. Um, the Sheeran, I didn't really really want to commit to a Lubelion from Grave. So, yeah, every time they look through the graveyard, it's just so many monsters. I go for Granginol to search for the Branded Fusion. I do not get Ashed. And from here, I believe it was a Valor on the Aluber. Tribute it. And then uh, I can set uh, Branded Lost onto the field and go kind of crazy in the end phase. He has two cards left in hand, I believe, or three, possibly. And uh, just in the draw phase, I just hit him with the with the puppet, you know, just too easy. 
They should have banned it. I'm sorry. I mean, you take this. So he go f goes first. I think I have maybe one bestial in hand. We'll see. I'm not even sure I have that. But he ends on a Desiree and a DDD and three sets. And yeah, I have to, to say that I sacked him really, really hard here because evenly into Droplet, into like a full board wipe, into the grass. Look screener. Jesus. I mean, two games in a row, we, we made the math in 60 cards. It's uh, one in 200. So, yeah. Um, we go on. We're, we're facing one interruption, which we know what it is. We know it's only the, the I think it was the Revive or the Pop. I don't remember. One of them, I believe. And uh, I go for a pretty solid play here. We're kind of running short on time here. So, I'm making as many monsters, big monsters in attack position that I can. And... Um, and I pass because, you know, we, we had to skip battle phase. He normal summons Max here or whatever, Caspar or something. I chained There Can Be Only One, which I drew. And then he um, pops it with the Unchained Trap. He revives back the, the Shayama, but it was just out of cards in hand, out of resources, out of follow-up because of that evenly matched. And we ended up winning that. Um, the Tikaboo helped, but I'm not sure if it was, uh, you know, the best in that scenario. So we're going up against a full U Bellbar. I just skipped the combo entirely because nobody cares about that. Um, he actually ended on a pretty like bad board, I guess. One Phantom, one Desiree. Um, and I do thrust for Grass here, which was for the memes. The correct play was to thrust for Branded Fusion because we already ran through his negates. But the Grass was funnier. We wanted to do it for content just to, to help people see what the card can do. So we went for another Grass. And this is where Branded and White comes in super super nice because it's another branded fusion because you already mill everything that you need it's in the graveyard you can just banish the materials from the grave and um i serenir his soul of rage so again no interruptions but the nightmare throne is annoying so i kind of make a misplay here but i couldn't really play around it because i was just out of resources from trying to break the board and again the thrust was kind of a mistake for grass honestly and he manages to stick the Spirit of Ubel, I go for a Guardian Chimera with Branded Lost, and I pop the Nightmare. I, I knew that he searched for another Nightmare Brain with the, the Spirit of Ubel that he summoned during my turn. And with, with these big bodies for Branded, it's just like, they summon two Ubel monsters and you're dead. But we hit the grass again. I'm sorry. I mean, <laughs> yeah, everybody's laughing. Uh, we do hit the Branded Fusion here, which is great. And the Gimmick Puppet, which is underrated. Like, hitting the Gimmick Puppet and not having to send it incredible so here you're gonna see a puppet lock through four interruptions branded fusion chain opening quem dumps cartesia chain one quem chain two albion imperm on the albion we tribute we summon back the cartesia we place branded lost we get hit with another imperm on the cartesia which i chain book of eclipse two just because i need this to resolve i cannot wait for for his turn and now i can actually get more cards because of kit that I searched from Brandon Lost, and I have Rindbrim in the grave and phase interactions. My board is relatively full. He still has a Bestial and a Called By, which he tops decks right now. So I go for Banishment in the draw phase to bait out a Bestial, chain in red, chain Called By, and then chain the Rindbrim to make the Albaz here. Shuffle back, make a Lubellion, and then Puppet Lock, which is basically what I've done. Um, so he, he scooped before because I told him it's Puppet Lock if you want me to go through the phases. Because his turn is really long, so you have to be really conscious of time. Unfortunately, Branded has kind of shorter turns, maybe a little bit longer now, but Ubel has like infamously long turns. Um, so he puts up a really, really big board. He plays for a lot now, but I have like one minute of time here. So, you know, I need to inflict a little bit of damage. And unfortunately, it's really hard because of the Nightmare Pain spell. But everything goes through. I managed to bait out the Desiree here. And he just has one monster negate for the Lubellion. I thumbs it up. Um, activate Branded in red here. Make a Guardian Chimera. And uh, we just drew. Uh, we didn't have enough time. I didn't manage to go into the battle phase. Which, by the way, I must. And I must attack because of Nightmare Pain. And yeah. Last game versus Snake Eye, a match that I was sure I was going to win, but unfortunately, 
I really pooped the bed during the last round of this match, so you're gonna you're gonna have to wait and see. So look at look at the Snake Eye combo with normal summon Snake Eye. He did butcher the line a bit, I would say, but he, he's still a solid player, so I trusted him that like, okay, he's gonna know what he's doing, but I did open two bestials, which is rough because the main sources of interruption for this deck right now are the Fiendsmith cards. Making a Desiree, making a DDD. And it's obviously really hard playing through two bestials. So he has so many bodies on board. No Apo. Thank goodness. It's so fun not to have to worry about Apo with this deck. Um, I'm going to hit the IP again. So now he's like basically on zero interruptions. He goes for um, just a nice Zelantis that can just pop in the battle phase. But also two sets, which I'm not aware of. End phase Magnemite searches for the Albaz, which I want to normal summon because I have Cartesia in hand. And I want to bait out interruptions, but he doesn't have any. So we just go on and make a mirror jade here. Special summon the Cartesia, activate the effect, make a Granganiol, send, send with Granganiol and um, the Albion here. We do we do send the gimmick puppet already because we have everything that we need. Branded fusion, um, but Albion, by the way, drew into grass. He ashes my grass, so my branded fusion can resolve. <laughs> it's so, so stinky, dude. Um, but, but it's really funny. I just make an Albion because I know he doesn't have anything. If he had anything, he would have already activated. His sets are wanted and called by the grave. I pick up at the board cautiously just to not trigger anything. And I leave the Phoenix on board because I just want to make sure he has... Uh, I don't really have a way to, to out it because he's got so, so much attack. He's got the attack boost. And um, yeah, I just puppet it and... Yeah, he did have called by, but he didn't activate it. I'm not really sure why. Game two, honestly, like, I could have been able to win this game, I think. He does have full combo here. I have one bestial. I have one Magnemite here, but it doesn't matter because he still manages to end on a Desiree. Um, so I think it's going to be Desiree with the Flameburge IP Princess setup. So it's like a pretty solid board. And he also has, I believe just he draws from wanted and the draw is ash blossom and i think that was what won him the game um in all honesty so i try to play through the board uh he doesn't have any floodgates or anything which is solid so i just try to play imperm on the aluber and i chain branded in red to that targeting the alba as i sent and now i can make big ol guarding chimera and uh, the droplet was chained on desiree which tried to negate it i do manage to resolve and get the branded fusion here and this Ash is the problem, because if that resolves, then yeah. Now, I did make a misplay here, but we're going into a game which I misplayed so, so hard, and I have to explain what happened here. So as you can see from my hand, it's Thrust, High Spirits, Opening, Allure, and Deployment. So the normal play is go for Deployment to protect the Alubert that you're going to summon later, from the opening but there is a better combo here that also plays well into dogwood you can activate allure chain opening you know i might have had been punished because they could have chained ash blossom to my opening and i could have discarded my entire hand nobody knows but the probably better play here was to go for that initially he might have actually activated the dogwood and then you can just add from the opening you don't have to summon it and you can just go end phase he loses half his life points and you win but instead, I kind of played into that. And again, the other thing that I'll show in a second that I did end up searching for a Luber so I can make a quick masquerade. But unfortunately, if I just normal it and activated something and search for something like Branded in Red or Branded Banishment, I could have survived that turn. But one minute is not enough to think about the most optimal play. And this is what ended up happening. I did not think about the most optimal play. This is how you learn. Learn from my mistakes. Do as I say, not as I do. And uh, yeah, and enjoy this uh, cringy loss moment. So instead of going for the allure opening line, we have one minute to time. My heart is racing, beating out of my chest, and he chains Dogwood here. So he gains 15. I could have played it much, much better. I was feeling that loss all day long afterwards. It really, really sucked because I just could have probably won even though he Dogwooded me. Thrust gets ashed, and I'm kind of left on nothing. I could have normaled the Alubear here, and I was thinking about it. And he wouldn't have gained life points from the Dogwood. And I could have normaled 
um, and and set branded banishment for follow up, just so when I fuse and I make a masquerade, I can revive the masquerade and just protect myself from dying. But I just don't do that. I just misplayed because it was one minute to time, and you know it is what it is. Just have to play more conservatively. Normal Ash and I chain Cartesia to make masquerade right now, so. He's up 500 life, uh, 1,500 life points. So he's going to pay 600 for Poplar in hand, 600 for Ash on field to send and summon the Flame Birch from deck, and then 16, uh, 600 again for Flame Birch to put the Masquerade in the Spell and Trap Zone. Okay? So he's going to be down 300 life points. If I have Branded Banishment there, I survive. He goes Battle Phase, I activate Banishment, and I survive and I win by 300 and I just didn't do that and I lost. He places it and uh, yeah, that was about it. Unfortunate loss, but sometimes you got to learn from your mistakes. And this is it. This is this week's Local Chronicles playing Grass Brandon. It was such a blast. Honestly, leave your thoughts in the comments down below. Don't forget to share this with a friend who needs to learn why grass is the correct build. And of course, don't forget the collaboration with SleeveChief.de on the 22nd. Get ready for the hottest branded merch you've ever seen. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.